The Black Swordsman of Berserk is a mystery to the inhabitants of Midland, as well as anime-only fans of the series. We don't know why Guts is so angry, so standoffish, or why is he so cold to the people that would even call him friend and celebrate his achievements. Well, that's because we as fans and anime-only watchers have glossed over the trauma and hardship of Guts, the very root of the darkness that grew and dwells inside him, and the tree that bore the fruits of his trauma. Trigger warning, this video contains images that can be very triggering to people that have experienced trauma as adults or children. When most people think of Guts and Berserk, they think of the anime adaptions and the Golden Age arc of the story. They think of Guts swinging his huge sword around, cutting men in two like butter, plowing through men hundreds at a time, gaining both fame and infamy throughout Midland. As Guts continues his journey, he also destroys various demonic forces and apostles of the God Hand. Guts is known as an absolute Chad that will throw his body on the line in pursuit of his goals, destroying his body physically in order to feel satisfied in his journey towards standing beside Griffith and feeling equal, becoming one of the most feared men in Midland. But Guts has shown vulnerability at times, especially in the manga. In the anime adaptions, they kind of gloss over the horrific things that happened to Guts as a boy and even as an infant. Guts was born from the corpse of his dead and defiled mother. He was named Guts as a small child, not a regular name, just Guts. Mercenaries in Midland aren't exactly renowned for their intelligence. Guts became a tool and an object. Being raised by a mercenary crew, Guts was beaten by his father figure and sold out to the beast of a man, Donovan. This would affect anyone, even if suppressed to the depths Guts had. In the manga, Guts got revenge on Donovan, and that was pretty much it. No one knows, no one cares, or misses him, so they carry on. Then Gambino, his surrogate father, drunk and angry, blaming Guts for an injury he sustained during battle, attempts to kill him, and he falls on Guts' sword while he's putting it up in self-defense. At the time, Guts is in survival mode and must flee for his life, but this builds a lifelong distrust that carries over to the band of the Hawk and all his interactions in the future. Guts is always restless and always would rather be swinging his sword. He has trouble interacting with his friends and surrogate family. Many would assume that's because he's dedicated, but really, it's Gambino's brutal tutelage and PTSD from his childhood assault from Donovan. The anime never really addresses the effects these things had on him, basically shit happened, and Guts carries forward, like a stoic soldier. Guts is a stoic, brooding man, with good reason, the traumas he suffered early in life are carried with him, and cause a severe reaction when he and Casca are finally intimate. He finally bears all to her, literally and figuratively, after violently having an episode of a flashback to the trauma of Donovan and Gambino. His PTSD triggers a flight or fight response that has him holding Casca by the throat, and seeing himself as a child choking in his own hands. Casca helps him to suppress these emotions and open himself to her and detail the ordeals he has endured, strengthening their bond and pushing them forward. Now, I'm just a barely educated weeb with no real trauma or education on the subject, but I can empathize with how all this background trauma and anguish would affect someone who knows nothing of the warmth of their mother's love, whose only life experiences with any comrades are forged in battle with death and killing his only continuous companions. It's no wonder Guts walls off his emotions and suffers through internal anguish from the betrayals of his early childhood. He's a deeply scarred man and a survivor. His trust is not given lightly. In the manga, it details how it shaped his future interactions and distress for most peoples. Guts' nihilistic nature and brooding personality are etched onto his very being from the early years of his life. As a child soldier in a mercenary company, he was exposed to brutal men and their violent malevolence. He was trained mercilessly by Gambino to swing his sword, fight to the death, take no prisoners, and do whatever is necessary to stand atop the pile of corpses in battle. Gambino had no warmth to give. As a tool of war, he had more affection toward a dog begging for a meal than he did towards Guts. Donovan used and abused Guts as a plaything, bought and paid for, for his own sick pleasure. Guts as a small child was terrorized by this depraved man that saw Guts as little more than an object to fulfill his twisted desires. This broke something inside Guts, and it wasn't until he took Donovan's life that he could move forward at all. On the battlefield, it's kill or be killed, and Guts does not have the opportunity to back down. And when a child ends another person's life, they will inevitably have PTSD and traumatic symptoms. After reviewing these past traumas and showing how they contributed to the mindset of Guts early in his journey through Midland, it becomes evident that it's what shaped the entirety of the story of Berserk. Miura filled the beginning of Guts' life with more trauma and violence than most individuals could bear, and in doing so created a masterpiece of manga that is held up as a standard that all mangakas strive for. Trauma shaped Guts into the man he became, 
and so shaped the entire story of Berserk as a result. The story building in Berserk is as deep as the chasm in Gut's soul. And there are only more traumas to come for our hero as this all happens before the eclipse occurs, those horrific events that shape the story after the Golden Age arc and drive Guts even further into himself. Thanks for joining me on this analysis of Guts and Berserk. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please comment below. Subscribe to support my channel. Thanks again, this has been the Saucy Senpai. Remember to keep watching and always keep dreaming.